This is Nathan Bowman with Draper Inc. Today we are going to cover programming the IP gateway for the IntelliFlex IO system. Okay, first thing is first, connecting the IP gateway. If you notice on the back of the IP gateway, there is a small switch. It says device or network. It's imperative that this switch is flipped to the correct side to ensure that you're plugging your IP gateway in correctly. As you can see, I have mine set to device and I have my IP gateway plugged into a device port of an NDC3. If your IP gateway is going to be at the end of the run, uh, you can simply set this to network and you can plug your IP gateway directly into the network port of an NDC. So you have your options, but you need to ensure that the switch on the back of the IP gateway is flipped to the appropriate side. Each IP gateway has two IP ports available, both on this side. If we turn this up, you can see that we have an IPA and an IPB. These can be used to tie directly into a building network, or if we're building a dark network for the shade system, you can use the IPA and IPB to wire IP gateways from floor to floor together to create one continuous uh, communication network over IP. On the main menu, you have two options, device list and configuration. So I'm going to jump into device list first. This is a good tool for troubleshooting when you walk on site. You select device list and it's going to give you a breakdown of everything currently tied into the network. Um, as you can see, I only have one motor currently plugged in. So it reads as one total devices. My network is stable and my one device is an AC motor. If you have 15 motors and three switches connected, it's going to populate and say 18 total devices and it's going to give you a breakdown of how many motors and how many switches you have. If it says anything other than network stable, uh, that means that you most likely have a continuity issue or a communication issue on your low voltage line and that needs to be investigated further. Otherwise you may see some intermittent functionality. So you always wanna make sure that this says network stable before you walk off a site and assume it is complete. Okay, device list. So now we're going to back out and we are going to go into configuration. From here, we have a couple different menu options, IP port, IP groups, backnet, or factory reset. So let's dive into the first one, IP port. So we're going to hit enter. By default, every IP gateway ships out under DHCP. Uh, this means that it's going to obtain its IP configuration from the network it's plugged into. However, if they have specific IP information or if you're setting up a dark network, we're going to want to change this to static. To do so, select mode and hit enter. DHCP will highlight, use your up or down arrows to navigate to static and then hit enter again. We now have a static IP. It automatically defaults some IP information in there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change that. So to change our IP address, we navigate down with our down arrow, highlight IP address and then hit enter. From here, it's going to allow me to change each numerical value uh, at the individual layer. So it's going to select the first three digits. If I hit enter again, it's going to go into the first numerical value. I can use up or down to navigate through one through nine, or if I want to leave that, I hit enter again. It's going to take me to my second value. Again, I can use up or down to change that from zero to nine, so on and so forth. Hit enter again. Once these numbers are highlighted, you can use your down arrow to navigate to the second set of numbers. Uh, again, hit enter once highlighted to make adjustments to any of those three digits. Once the full number is highlighted again, you can press down to continue to navigate through the various numerical values that can be set. Once you're happy with it, you can hit the back button and it will save that information. Now I'm going to navigate down to the subnet mask. Again, this is going to be set up the same way as the IP address. So we're going to select subnet mask and hit enter. 255 is selected. If I want to change any of those numbers, I simply hit enter again. Now I'm at the individual numerical value level and I can make these changes. So let's get over to the next number. I can change that as well. Uh, then I can change the third number. Again, if I hit enter, it will highlight the entire number. From there, I can use my down arrow to navigate through the various numerical values that can be adjusted. Once I'm happy with my subnet mask, I can hit back. It's going to save this information. Now I can go down and adjust my default gateway. Changing the numerical values for any of the IP configuration is going to be exactly the same. You select the configuration you want to adjust, hit enter, 
it's going to select the entire number if you want to get down to a granular individual number level you simply hit enter again make your changes hit enter to navigate through the numbers if a full number is selected you can use your down arrow to navigate through make your changes and then hit back it will save that information if you are doing a project where you're tying into a building's existing network and they request the MAC address of the device of the IP gateway, that can be found on the IP configuration screen. Simply navigate all the way down to where it says MAC address, and that is the information that you would give them or the digits directly under that. That is not a configurable item that is hard-coded into the controller that is simply for informational purposes. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions or concerns, please contact Draper Technical Support at 1-800-238-7999 and select option 3.